Welcome to Aussie Indian and uh, we are here at the Old Kings Oval witnessing a very unique cricket match between the New South Wales police team and the combined subcontinent team, Nepal, Bangladesh, Pakistan and India. That's a fantastic tournament. Uh, I've got uh, uh, Superintendent Gavin Dengate and uh, the cricket great Brett Lee and Mohit Kumar, one of the organizers. Uh, gentlemen, welcome to Aussie Indian. Thank you very much. Nice to be here. Brett, uh, first to you. Uh, we are here at uh, Old King Sobel and uh, this is where uh, the great Richie Beno uh, played his uh, uh, club cricket and later on to, of course, become one of the icons of cricket. Mm. And uh, what are your thoughts about the life and achievement of uh, Richie Beno? Yeah, well, look, it's funny when, you know, you hear the words uh, Richie Beno, you, you know, you hear his name spoken in the street. A lot of people know Richie Beno as a commentator, but he was a fantastic Australian cricketer, 248 test wickets. Uh, he was a great leader, a great captain, uh, and, and got the the respect of his, you know, sort of fellow players. Then when he went into broadcasting and to be, you know, the the um, we always say the captain of the you know the Channel Nine cricket commentary team, he um, he's just a wonderful human being, great commentator, and, and you know you know be sorely missed. Mm -hmm. Many of the experts put him in the same league as Don Bradman's and his contribution, they say that uh, Richie Beno's contribution mm. is uh, equal to that of Don, Don Bradman. What would you say? Yeah, definitely. Look, uh, you can't always go on stats. I know that uh, Donald Bradman, Sir Donald Bradman had such a great average, batting average and was a, you know, a fantastic player. It's very hard to compare eras as well. But, uh, you know, Richie Beno is definitely right up there, it's, you know, certainly from his leadership skills. But, um, you know, what he taught me in the commentary box, and he's such a gentleman, had time for everyone, beautiful human being. So, um, yeah, look, it's obviously a sad time. It, he, ha he hadn't been well uh, over the sort of past 18 months, but um, it's obviously very, very sad. Uh, we all know about your Indian connections, and you are, of course, uh, also acting in An Indian, the movie which is now being produced here in Sydney. Uh, how is that going? Yeah, it's going great. Uh, we finished filming a few weeks ago we had to pick up a, f a few different scenes mm -hmm. uh, before the, se the cricket season started I did most of the movie then obviously went and played cricket and commentated throughout the summer and then when that finished I uh, went and picked up a few different scenes that I had to do but that's all done and dusted now and comes out in June or July so I'm actually looking forward to see how it turns out hope I'm hoping it's gonna be all right I'm praying <laughs> it's gonna be okay I know I've heard a few words of Hindi you speak from time to time but uh, how much more you have learned after this movie yeah, well, look, it's it's um, there's there's not a lot of Hindi spoken in the movie in terms of me talking as my character because it's a an Australian-made movie, and that's what a lot of people don't realise that it's not a Bollywood movie. It's an Australian-made film with Indian flavour. Um, we've been so well backed up. It's the first film out of the Australian Indian Film Fund, privately funded. Uh, so we've a great team backing us, stellar cast and crew. Uh, work with the lovely Tanishta Chatterjee, who's an absolute legend of the you know the industry. Yeah. And she's not the Bollywood actress, you know, she's a proper Indian actress. You know, she's famous for Brick Lane in 2008 over in, in England. Um, and I learned a lot off her, so that, that was really nice to work with her. Mm -hmm. Many more uh, Bollywood movies coming up for Bradley? Uh, I want to see how the first one goes. I want to see, you know, we'll wait till June and, and July comes out and, uh, you know, we'll see how it, how, how it goes. Mm -hmm. And then maybe after that, yeah, we'll have to look at the second and the third. Of course, the, uh, you have been involved in uh, World Cup victories and Aussies lifted uh, the ICC Cricket World Cup at MCG. Uh, well, I think it was no surprise, was it? No, well, look, I think going into the tournament, they probably weren't the favourites. But, uh, you know, the way that they played throughout the summer, they got a bit of confidence and that momentum behind them. Um, I was really happy for India that they came back and fought very, very well. I thought they, particularly, you know, the quicks, they, they changed the way that they played. You know, they couldn't win a game against Australia. You know, they get to the World Cup and all of a sudden they've won seven games straight. You know, Australia were going in against India, five games to seven. Uh, India hadn't lost a game and obviously when they came together, um, you know, the rest is history. But look, I was really proud of the way India played. And I was equally proud, you know, the way the Australians played. You know, when Australian get half a sniff with the Aussie culture, you know, that, that never say die <laughs> attitude, That's right. uh, it's pretty hard to beat them. Well, everyone was saying who after Glenn McGrath and Brett Lee. Are you pleased with the pace attack Australia has now? I am. Look, I'm really pleased with someone like a Mitchell Stark. You know, he bowls 150 k's, left arm swings a ball in, both a brand new ball, and then brings a brings the old ball back in late. So when you've got someone like that that can, can hit his straps, I'll be interested to see how he goes in test cricket. We'll look and see, you know, to, to see that transition from the white ball to the red ball. He's been backed up beautifully by, uh, you know, Mitchell Johnson. Uh, Josh Hayeswood as well doing a great job. Shane Watson, just to mention a few of the quicks. So, you know, the guys are doing a good job. Mm -hmm. Now, the two 
uh, important series coming up, one against the West Indies and followed by Ashes. Uh, how do you think? What, what's your prediction? Yeah, look, I, I'm, I'm really hoping that uh, England are a lot more competitive than what they were throughout the last sort of you know World Cup. I know it's a different uh, style of cricket and Test cricket to One Day cricket, but you're still playing the same game. Uh, look, I, you know, I think that when Australia play England at home. And you're playing, you know, at the great lords and, and those types of venues. England always lift, and we saw that in 2005 when they beat us. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm expecting, you know, massive things from England. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a great tour, and you know, the guys who get the chance to go on, as I've been on there a few, you know, a few occasions, it's, it's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm.